probably seen videos like these circulating on social media. Dramatic footage of cars bursting into flames. Statistics from the Singapore Civil Defence Force shows that there are an average of 200 car fires on Singapore roads every year. That's one every two days. Oxygen, heat and fuel, that's all it takes to suddenly have a fire. The fire triangle can be reproduced anywhere, including in your car. Whew. In this episode, I find out what makes a car spontaneously combust and what you can do when that happens. It was a usual Saturday errand run for Mark Lee. But this particular day turned out to be an eventful one. When he reached his car, he spotted a puddle of liquid under the engine compartment. It smelled like gasoline. So Mark thought he had better head straight to the workshop to get it checked. Ten minutes into the trip, Mark heard a loud boom. Then saw flames erupting from under his car hood. And within two minutes, this happened. The incident took place along Ang Mo Kyo Avenue 1 back in 2010. Till this day, he's thankful that he managed to escape unhurt. I'm meeting him to find out why his car burst into flames. So by the time I got out and I just took my wallet and handphone, yeah. right, and I uh, got to the side of the road, by then the car was smoking, there was a lot of smoke coming out already. Oh, do you have some pictures here? Yeah. Wow, it's a lot of smoke. Yeah, it's a lot of smoke. And uh, very quickly, it, it turned into this. Whoa! So there was a lot of fire coming out from the engine bay. Yeah. You can see some liquid dripping down and it was on flames as well. Coincidentally or luckily, there was a traffic police okay. right behind me. And he helped to divert the traffic, asked me to go to the side of the road, and he helped to call the SCDF. And how long was it burning for? It was burning for about um, 10 to 15 minutes. How did you feel seeing your car on fire? At that time, I felt heartbroken. Uh, I was hoping to keep the car for more years to come and yeah. renew the CUE. But of course, I was also quite thankful that you know I didn't have any other family members or friends in the car because it was quite a dangerous situation and they could have gotten hurt. So, what caused the yeah. fire? At the point, the car was already 17 years old. The insurance surveyors concluded that it was due to a leaking fuel hose. I didn't realise that the fuel hose seems like quite an unimportant object could fail like this and it had to be replaced actually. But it cracked and it, and it leaked and the failure was catastrophic. Mark's car fire was the result of a leaky fuel hose. Granted, it was a rather old car at 17 years. But there have been reports of relatively newer cars catching fire in recent years. I'm keen to find out the common causes of car fires, so I've arranged to meet CJ Liu. He's a race car engineer and a workshop owner, and he's got some information that can satisfy my burning curiosity. So CJ, how is it that some cars just suddenly catch fire? If you look at the SCDF statistics, uh, mm -hmm. majority of the car fires are actually caused by electrical faults. The other will be mechanical failures, mm -hmm. uh, possibly due to poor maintenance. When you say electrical faults, what are we talking about? Improper wiring, maybe the owner has installed some aftermarket electrical devices. Well, like what? Sound systems, high power sound oh, systems. Oh, really? Yes. I think a lot of people install their in-car cameras, right? Yeah, car Does that camera. count? Yes, it, really? it does count, yes, yes. Especially if you have a battery pack or if there's a lot of wiring that runs to the back of the car as well. Simply put, rewiring your car to install add-ons is a fire risk, if not done properly. Experts we spoke with estimate that electrical faults contribute to about 95% of all car fires in Singapore. The rest could be a mechanical fault, like an overheated engine. 
CJ is going to show me how an electrical fault can be a fire risk using this junkyard car. It's an everyday car with wires found in multiple places. If you look at a typical car setup yeah. under the yeah. trim, okay. okay, you can pull out this kind of trim uh. easily. The more critical nature is actually the danger that lurks behind yeah. this. Because if you have any failure on this part, it is in close proximity to stuff that will serve as good kindling. These are all the sound insulation, carpeting. Right. Any spark would just Exactly, boom. yes. To simulate how improper wiring could lead to a fire, CJ has hooked up a new car horn to this common wire. But the horn will require more charge than the wire can carry. The results? Ooh. Wow! Ooh. Oh, I can see the wire just burning through. A smouldering mess that, according to CJ, could have started a fire if it was nearer to kindling like the carpet, upholstery, or even worse, other wires. Oh, wow! It's all black! Yeah, if you imagine that this wire is part of the installation, yeah. where it could be running somewhere under the dash, by the side panels, under yeah, some trim, yeah. the insulation has already gone. Before the wire snaps, you get smoke. So it's normally you'll hide it, you'll run through the yeah, panel. Exactly, exactly. So all that could have been combustible material, I guess. Yes. Look at that. Totally black. You want to look in the car? A portion of the wire has not blacked out, but you can see the heat is tremendous. It's actually melted the trim that's running close to the wire. Yeah. And this, I can see, is already a bit yellowish. It looks like it's melted into, into the dashboard. Into the That's how hot it was. Yep. And all this stuff, if we left it and kept going... Yeah, if we left it and it was enclosed, all covered up, no one knows what will happen. The main culprit for car fires in Singapore is an electrical fault. But as I'm about to find out, while an overheated engine doesn't happen that often, it could more dangerous. There's an average of 200 car fires on Singapore roads every year. And as I've discovered, most of them are caused by electrical faults through improper installation and rewiring of additional features to a car. But there's one more reason for car fires. An overheated engine. Garage owner CJ Lu is going to show me what can happen when an engine overheats. To simulate an overheated engine, CJ has removed some engine oil from this junkyard car. Leakage of engine oil is one of the main reasons for engines overheating. This is just a normal, normal car engine, engine, right? Yeah. It's common for engine oil to leak over time. Okay. And if they are left unattended, the leak can become worse. And sometimes these can collect in certain crevices and parts of the engine, as you can see here. Talking Point arranged for firemen to be on standby for this particular demonstration. We revved up the engine. And after 10 seconds... Whoa! I can hear it going and I can see it smoking away. I, I want to run away. In a little over a minute... Oh! I see a fire! Yeah, yeah. Oh, man! Oh, boy. And that happened really quickly. It's all going to go boom, right? Uh... <laughs> It took less than 20 seconds for the firemen to get busy again. Oh, it's on fire again! Yeah. That is smoking hot. I mean, it really is hot. I, I, I can feel the heat. Wow. And that was just from an engine that was probably overheating, running too much. 
running too little oil and the oil was in the wrong place. Not inside the <laughs> engine. Inside the engine, but outside the yeah. engine. Oh my gosh. I mean, what was amazing is that they put it out and it caught fire again. A car engine becomes overheated when its cooling system fails. This means there is no effective way for the engine to transfer heat away. And over time, a fire can start. While our experiments show how electrical faults and overheated engines can pose a danger, cars are essentially built with fail-safes to ensure that car fires don't happen very easily. For example, the automatic cutoff of fuel to the engine when it overheats, or cars refusing to start because of problems detected within the cooling system. I understand now how a car can unexpectedly catch fire due to neglect. Uh, a vehicle in bad shape can render multiple fail-safes built in useless. And every car owner knows that good maintenance is vital, but you know, what does that really mean? And here I am sitting in this car every day, but am I just really sitting in a ticking time bomb? I guess there's only one way to find out. Sean Xia operates Alpha City, a workshop that goes back 60 years. I'm bringing my car to him so that he can show me what to look out for when I send my car for servicing. The main things that you want to look out for are that you do uh, regular interval servicing, okay. which is what we call preventive maintenance. So the manufacturers actually have stated very clearly that different components of the car are rated to last so long. And uh -huh. then you want to make sure that you replace these components ahead of time before they become defective. Right. Sean is going to give my car a check to see if there are any defects that could make it a fire risk. Sean, hey. so how? You've taken a look at the car? Yes, your car is in good shape. Okay. Uh, you don't need to worry about fire risk. But Although it looks very uh, covered up, you can see there are many, many wires and hoses everywhere that okay. you can visually inspect yourself for any exposed or frayed wires. A good idea would be when you get the car first, yep. take a few photos of how all the wires are positioned. So in future, you can refer back to see whether anything has gone out of place because these are one of the biggest causes of uh, car fires. A short circuit or the wire resting on a hot surface, those are the biggest fire risks in any car. With these modern cars, they don't even have a dipstick anymore. You actually can access it on the dashboard. The computer system actually shows you your coolant level, your oil level, and that's actually a good thing for drivers because right. you don't need to get out and open the hood to know how much oil you have. Apart from regular preventive maintenance, mm -hmm. another thing that you can do to avoid having car fires is not to have any major modifications done to your car. Okay. What kind of modifications do people usually do? Uh, well, like nowadays, things such as methanol injection are in the spotlight. It's one of the easiest and cheapest way to get additional horsepower. Okay, but that is bad for the car because... Well, for a number of things. Improper installation could result in the wiring being loose or being contacting too close to a hot surface. Okay. And also with this added power, the engine cooling as well as the braking may not be adequate enough. If you are adding more power, you will create more heat. And if your cooling is not sufficient, you can lead to overheating, which is another major cause of car fires. But people still do it here. There are some shops that do provide such services, but these are not very common and most people, I believe, would probably go over the border to get them done. Methanol injection kits are illegal in Singapore because they may adversely affect the safety and exhaust emissions of the vehicle. I'm going to see what makes these kits dangerous and the damage they can cause. Oh, wow! I've discovered that electrical faults and overheated engines can cause car fires, simply because of poor maintenance. But there is one more risk factor that could make your car a death trap. 
methanol injection, an illegal modification aimed at increasing horsepower. Methanol injection kits are not approved by the Land Transport Authority because of safety and emission concerns. But some drivers looking for extra performance still take the risk, given that it is inexpensive and some would think easy to install. So what is methanol and how dangerous is it? I'm meeting Professor Ang Wee Han to find out. As a chemist, he knows a thing or two about chemical reactions. So Prof, what exactly is methanol? So methanol is a carbon-based material. It's most closely related to ethanol, which is what we commonly found in liquor. Why then is methanol so dangerous? We're going to do a simple experiment just to show uh, kind of the burning characteristic. Methanol injection kits for cars are usually made up of one part methanol and one part water. Water is mixed in because it makes the solution much harder to ignite which makes it less likely to start a car fire. But there is still risk. To show us how methanol burns, Prof Ang lights up four Petri dishes, each with gasoline, ethanol, methanol, and finally, a one-to-one -one methanol water mixture. The methanol water mixture, which is used in cars, burns with the faintest flame. Methanol is sometimes perceived as an invisible flame just because of the colour of the flame. Because I can't tell it's burning, right? But of course here we are burning in an open environment within the vehicle. The combustion dynamics is completely different. I see. So in a piston, you're introducing gasoline, auto-igniting and under pressure. So the burning characteristics will be quite different. Methanol fumes can also be quite combustible. If you put it in a confined space, you could see that it is a much more vigorous, much more dangerous uh, reaction. Mm. Why don't I just show you? Yes, yes, please. To simulate a confined space, Prof Ang coats the inside of a flask to create a chamber of methanol fumes. And then, he inserts a burning splint. The vapour ignites easily and it gives you this very hot flame. Okay. And this is what happens when you have all this vapour and oxygen trap. If you carry methanol in vehicles and they are not properly contained, if the structure fails, then it's going to easily combust. So this is why methanol is so dangerous. And in a water mixture, sometimes you can't even see it. It's burning, but against a strong backlight, like you just won't be able to see it. Methanol in itself is highly flammable. And what makes it more dangerous is that it's almost invisible. So even if it was burning under my car hood, I wouldn't know until it's too late. My experiments all involve petrol cars. Come 2040, Singapore will be moving away from petrol cars with combustion engines to vehicles powered by electricity. The absence of gasoline are one of the main appeals for cars like these. But yet, there have been reports of electric vehicles being a fire risk as well. Hyundai is one of the first casualties. The Korean company recalled over 74,000 cars globally in February 2021, after 16 of them caught fire. The cars have since been discontinued in South Korea. Meanwhile, Tesla was investigated by US safety authorities over a battery software upgrade in some cars, following reports of vehicle fires. I want to know just how safe cars of the future will be. I've arranged to meet Olaf Tekiet to help with my electric vehicle or EV anxiety. Olaf is a big fan of EVs and a specialist in lithium-ion batteries. Electric vehicles are essentially powered by lithium-ion batteries. And these batteries are known to catch fire if they are exposed to hot conditions or if you overcharge them. 
To test out if our EV batteries could be a fire risk, Olaf will help me run two tests. The first, an external heat test. We're putting a cell into an oven to simulate how an EV could be susceptible to overheating in normal everyday use. After holding steady at 50 degrees Celsius, which is the average temperature for Singapore roads, the battery did not show any signs of breakage. So far, so good. What about the overcharging of batteries? We will attempt to overcharge this same single cell beyond 100%, the same way some people leave their devices plugged in overnight, and we'll see if the cell breaks. Nothing happened, didn't work. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm very surprised myself. So okay. we've been waiting for, I think, about half an hour. Yeah. And in between, we've actually increased the voltage, mm -hmm. but still, the battery cell is still intact. Nothing happened. But you're surprised by that result, right? I'm surprised by that result. So apparently, this battery cell can withstand a good amount of overcharging okay. without catching fire. So if the EV batteries are so safe, what about the earlier reports of fire risks? Well, Olaf tells me earlier recalls for EVs were mainly due to battery defects in production, not because the lithium-ion cells are dangerous. My confidence in electric vehicles has certainly been bolstered by the lithium-ion battery strong showing. But car fires can still happen unexpectedly, and as I've discovered, mainly due to a simple electrical fault. So it's best to be prepared. And here are some other handy tips you might find useful should you ever find yourself in a burning car. Always have a fire extinguisher handy. And also, one of these which you can get for about $10. Let me show you what it can do. If you are trapped in a burning car, you can use this to cut off a restraining seatbelt and smash a window so you can escape. The headrest might also do the trick if you're in a bind. And of course, have one of these handy, a fire blanket. Now this could save your life. 